but they did inspire a range of models and the first to come out was the Kitmaster which allowed the builder to build a complete train set doing the three cars needed. After Kitmaster came the Triang version which was based on a western region set. You can tell that by the word the fact that it's just got Pullman written on it. And in fact a few years ago I totally rebuilt a Triang set. Correct bogies, correct windows and cab ends that were cast for me by Chris Lee of Model Rail and I actually rebuilt this from the ground up and it was a superb little runner. As you can see here in the only footage I actually have of it running around my old layout about 10, 11 years ago. So apologies for the quality. But here it is running around on a modified Hornby Class 87 chassis and this really was quite a nice model but I did end up selling it. So if somebody out there still has it, I'd be interested to know. Each coach was coupled together with KD knuckle couplers. It really did look quite nice. And then I sold it to get a Backman version, but never did. Until very recently. Now Backman released this model about 10-11 years ago. And this really is something else. And I only managed to accure it on the off chance. My Acura Scale 92 failed and I couldn't get a replacement. So instead of getting a refund, the local model shop, trains for you had this in their second user cabinet, and I couldn't resist swapping it for the dead 92. And what a swap it was. This model is simply sublime. So in a different take on Trash to Track, I'm actually gonna have a look at the entire train, and I'm gonna tackle some problems that I encountered with buying second-hand models. So we're going to start with the power car. Now I'm going to only show you three of the cars because they are all the same and I will explain that in a moment. But the detail on this Backman Midland Pullman is absolutely astonishing. There is a detail pack that comes with it that allows you to fit air horns. It also has the correct light disc to put over the end lights. The roof detail is an etched fan grille, all separately fitted handrails. The paintwork is pristine. The print work is phenomenal with no paint bleed whatsoever. The underframe detail is again exceptional with printed legible writing. Everything you see here that you may not be able to read on camera is legible in real life. Now the blue Pullmans were, were constructed as half set units. So you had a power car, a kitchen car and a parlor car on the Midland sets. You can see there the detail I'm just pointing out there, the grills, etc. But as I was saying, they were done as half sets. So three cars, a power kitchen and a parlour, was considered a half set of train. So Backman have only needed to do three moulds to make a complete train set. The interior is also fully modelled, but we'll have a look at this shortly when I remove the body. On the coach ends is the buffing plate, conductive couplings, multiple working jumper cables, and the sliding interior doors between the units. So yeah, the trains were two half sets, and Backman has modelled that um, prototypically. So the three coaches you will see labelled A, B and C, will, a, coach A is the power car, will power coach B and C. D, E and F form the other half of the train. And here you can see power car listed as F, so this will go with D and E and power that half. It will make more sense later on. The kitchen car is an absolute work of art. This has got a lot of detail on it and is not a standard um, feature. It's not easy to modify a parlor car. Um, trust me, I've tried. I've done the rebuild of the Triang one. And you'll notice that on the kitchen car there are two different types of bogey. One power bogey and one saloon bogey, we'll call it. That's because on the real units, the power car bogey underneath this end of the kitchen car drove the unit as long with one of the power bogies on the power car. The bogey underneath the cab of the unit didn't provide any traction for the train at all. On the other end of the kitchen car we've got the uh, false door there that didn't open in real life but we've got the exhaust detail for the generator set that sits underneath that's powered the kitchen equipment. All the wheels on this model are conductive, all of them pick up electricity. And again with the kitchen car, the interior is fully detailed and fully moulded in the correct colours. There are even anti on the seat backs. So as I was saying, these trains, the 
bogey there and this one powered the actual train from each end. This bogey on the front didn't provide any traction. It didn't have traction motors in it, according to the literature I've read about these trains. The kitchen car has also got a lot of roof detail on it, uh, including vents and water filler hatches. How Backman have got this right is beyond me, as kitchen car um, photographs of the roofs are very, very scarce indeed. So that's the kitchen car. And next we'll look at the parlour car. And you can tell that these are all first class vehicles because of the divide in the window. The divide in the window was there on the prototype because each seat had its own individual working Venetian blind, which is why there's a line down the middle of the window. The um, ends of the parlour car there are moulded um, correctly. The Pullman logos, the crest, it is just a beauty to look at. And you can see there that there is no paint bleed around the white and the nankin blue, which is the correct shade on this model. The underframe on the parlour car is a lot less detailed, as there was a lot less on the actual prototype um, when it was running in service. So now we've had a quick look at the models and the cars. Like I say, the six car set, they're all the um, they're duplicated each end. We'll come to some of the problems of buying a second-hand model. And the first one with this blue Pullman was the fact that the wheels were quite dirty. So upending the parlour car in my loco cradle, I can turn the wheels uh, manually using a cotton bud and methylated spirits to clean the wheels and to clean the carbon buildup off them. Another issue that this parlour car had was that one of the brake shoes had been bent inwards and was actually rubbing onto the wheel itself causing friction and a loud squeaking noise when the model was in motion. So using my long nose pliers, I'm able to bend that back in place and the durability of Backman's plastic allows that to be bent back in place without snapping off. So now that's back in place, it's back to wheel cleaning. And on a model like this, it does seem a bit overkill to clean all the wheels since they all pick up. But it is best to have clean wheels, otherwise it will just spread the dirt back to your track. So I work uh, progressively and clean all the wheels on the set and as you can see as it runs around the layout it does look really nice and all the lights are lit and everything is conducting as it should. But now we come on to a more um, in-depth or more serious problem that was noted with this unit which is going to require me to strip this power car down to its component parts. Now it may not be much to some but when this model runs the lights work but the table lamps inside of it don't. When function 1 is pressed on the DCC controller, the table lights go off. I'm just digressing there because I found out that Backman um, actually made these Midland Pullman figures to go with it, so I did pick some of these up. But as I was saying, when function 1 was pressed, the lights were off. When function 1 was um, not on, the lights were on. But there wasn't enough power in the LEDs to make the table lamps work throughout the three coaches as it should. So I had the decoder tested and the decoder was fine so that pointed to a problem with the PCB. So I managed to get contact Backman Spares and I have bought a new PCB for a power car and you do have to get the correct ones they are listed um, they've got the car numbers on as you will see uh, possibly there this is unit A for power car A and as luck would have it, it comes pre-wired with the electronic couplings. So although it's a bit of a daunting prospect, we're going to strip this power car down and replace the PCB and hopefully rectify the light problem. Like I said, some people might not have done it because it didn't affect the running, but I personally wanted all the lights to work correctly. So to strip this down, we have to remove the four body securing screws. There are two here behind the front bogey, and there are two at the rear. Um, right at the rear of the unit when I can get that screw out of the way the um, other two are just there just past that axle so turning the bogey to its extremity will allow you to get a screwdriver in to remove it now once all four screws have been removed from the uh, from the power car underneath I used my thumbnail just to gently prise the body sides up and off the clips that hold it in place 
And once all four clips have been disengaged, which is quite a tricky affair because they kept clipping back on, the body shell is loose. But don't pull it away too quick as it is connected to the chassis with this eight pin, uh, sorry, with this four pin plug. So there's the decoder setup, and with a pair of electric, um, electrically statically discharged tweezers, I'm just going to remove the 21 pin decoder. As like I said, I have had this tested, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So I will be refitting the decoder later on. And this is the uh, factory decoder that came in the model um, from the Backman factory. So now we're going to have a look at stripping the chassis down. Um, and the first thing to do, as I said, is to remove that four pin plug connector. And we've also got to remove this chassis um, interior. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the fully detailed paint and painted interior of these power cars with the different colored seats and the anti macassars on the seat backs. And even though you can't see it because of the um, frosting on the window, there is even a molded toilet and sink in the toilet area. So this, um, well, left one screw just in there slightly. This lifts off, and I'll have a closer look at those details that I mentioned. And it is absolutely exquisite. The colours are correct um, from what I've seen in literature. And there are the light bars that transmit light from those two LEDs to the table lamps. Once that's removed, I finally get round to removing this. Um, connector piece which powers the cab lights and the interior roof lights and that allows me to set the body shell aside so that I can work on the chassis itself. The next thing to go is this plug. This is the motor plug. We have to remove this gently without bending any of the pins so I use my needle nose pliers for that and then we've got to remove this chassis wake. Now the first thing to do is release this big screw in the middle as that will allow the bogey to drop out. So just giving it a few turns there. The usual standard Backman diesel setup allows the bogey and drive shaft to be released. And then you can see it's the typical Backman mechanism of a drive shaft to the gearbox. I'll put that screw back in there. And then you remove the four small screws from the metal die cast weight, which will reveal the motor. And these are small screws, obviously keep everything together so that all the screws go back in the correct place and i'm not going to lie it's quite a daunting thing working on a model uh, which costs as much as this does but once that's out of the way we are now got access to this uh, small motor now on the blue pullman sets both power cars have a motor in them so both are driving you don't need a big motor to move the full set as there are two motors to do that to remove the motor, you have to remove these two uh, motor retaining pieces that are screwed in place. So these are simply unscrewed. And then the motor just lifts away. Now, one thing I did notice when I lifted my motor out was that that rubber bushing there behind the flywheel had actually come adrift. So I needed to push that back into place. I think that must have come adrift through use. And now we have almost got access to this PCB. Now this is held in place onto the die cast chassis with four screws. Now the next thing to do is to remove these um, four screws but we also need to remove that coupling keeper plate at the back there to release the wires but removing these four tiny screws there are two at the back here just remove that one and two at the front So when the, um, I'm just looking there to make sure there's no other screws. So it is just the two at the rear and two at the front. And then, like I said, that black uh, piece of plastic that's towards the right hand side there, that will need to be removed as well as the wires for the um, conductive couplings go through that. Now, one thing I will warn you about, if you ever attempt this yourself, is when you remove this black piece here do so very gently now unbeknownst to me at the time the coupling has a very very fine wire spring mechanism in it which when i lift this off pinged off into the ether now it isn't till later on when i go to reassemble the model i realize it's missing but luckily 
we find it. Now that's the old PCB removed. And you can see there the die cast chassis that comes with these blue Pullman power cars. And, it is, and we've managed to strip it down into its component parts. Now, it is quite heavy, just as it is. So this is the old PCB. Now, it does work as for driving and interior lights, but the table lights um, are not working. And this also gives you easy access to the switches underneath. Now, I'll point out where those are later. They allow you to turn on the cab and table lights. So putting it all back together now, we've got the new uh, circuit board. Here it is with the pre-wired coupling. Now, obviously, you have to be very gentle with this. You don't want to break any of those solder joints. So I put the coupling through the, um, the hole in the chassis there, put it back in place. And then it's now I start to realize that there might be something missing. And it's that piece of wire I mentioned before. So what I'm going to do, can you see the wire on my cutting mat there at all? Anybody? No, neither did I. And it took a while, but there it is. And look how fine that piece of wire is. If that had gone on the floor, I'd have never have found it. So if you ever take a power car apart, be mindful that that spring piece of wire is there. And rebuilding this coupling mechanism, I really did need three hands for this. I needed one to hold the spring one to hold the coupling and one to put it back together and it was a very very fiddly process which is why I'm going to jump forward in a second and I actually didn't film it because the camera stand was getting in the way but now the coupling has been refitted that spring and that retaining piece has been screwed back on and now the PCB can also be screwed back on those uh, brass bits there are the pickups which transfer power from the bogey so refitting that we just screw in these tiny screws that we removed uh, a short while ago and then we're going to tackle what must have been one of the most fiddly bits about this rebuild and that is putting the wires to the coupling back in to the clips on that black retaining plate to the right there now that is entirely made of plastic and the retaining clips had no giving them at all but without the wires being through the retaining clips the interior wouldn't sit flush to the floor so using a pair of tweezers, I had to painstakingly thread each wire in the tiny gap and make sure it didn't come out. And it was a right pain in the ass because you'd get one wire in, feed the second wire in, which would then push the first wire back out again. And it did take some time to get all six wires back. And I was mindful that I didn't want to break these plastic clips because they did seem quite fragile. But then I really did need the wires in there. So... I believe the wires in the factory are threaded through this before they're soldered up because it's the only sensible way of doing it. So speeding the footage up, I mean, it took me the best part of an hour to um, thread all six wires through these four clips. But eventually we get there and now we've got the PCB in, the wires and couplings are back. So now I'm going to refit the motor. And making sure it's the correct way up so that just sits in there like that and then the two motor retainers are then screwed in place again just moving that wire slightly whoops i didn't mean to knock the uh, camera stand there apologies for that so <laughs> more fingers and thumbs with this so yeah screwing the motor retaining plates back down and um, these will only go uh, as tight as the hole the hole is only threaded the length of the screw so you it isn't done so you can't really over tighten these and then the one on the front was uh, replaced as well and then the front bogey with the drive shaft was put into place ensuring <laughs> and i say this now but ensuring that the drive shaft makes contact correctly with the drive shaft holder on the flywheel now you'll see why i laugh at myself in a minute when this is back together but i am um, just going to adjust that pickup there and that is in place and then this die cast weight can go back on over the top of the motor and also over the top of the bogey tower 
which when it's all correctly aligned like that should be okay. And then the four tiny screws which I left in the die cast housing are then tightened up. And then I put the screw in on the top that holds the bogey in place. Now this itself won't over tighten because Blackman have engineered it so that it will only go as uh, so far in so that it stops you locking the front bogey up. So next thing to do, I'm just going to put the decoder back in. Gently push that back in. I've already reconnected the, um, the motor. And you can see that where my finger is, those two LEDs. On this PCB, they are lovely and bright. And they are working correctly. Now, I didn't show you before, but on the other PCB, they weren't working. And those switches I mentioned earlier, turning the table lamps and cab lamps off, are right down there underneath this bogey they're almost inaccessible but they are there should you want to turn your cab lights off if you run on dc next thing to go back on is this interior i'm just making sure everything's out of the way this then is screwed back into place with the five retaining screws now i did toy with the idea of putting people in this uh, pullman unit but for now i'm going to leave it uninhabited as it were and then once the, whoops, these uh, magnetic screwdrivers aren't all they're cracked up to be sometimes. But once all of those screws are in place, I'm then going to just give the axles a test. And even though it doesn't show up very well on camera, all four of those table lamps are now working correctly as they should. Whereas before they weren't, so it was indeed a PCB problem with the original power car. Last but not least to go in is the plug for the interior lights. That's gently pushed home into the, into the holder there. And then using these tweezers, I'm just going to push that home. And again, using a battery to make sure all the lights are working before I put the body shell on. You can see that when I eventually get the battery lined up, everything is working as it should. So then... That wire is folded up out of the way. Everything, I'm just checking that, making sure that all screws have been removed, have been replaced. The body shell is then clipped back home by uh, gently pushing it down onto that chassis. And it goes on with a satisfying click. And then it's back into the loco cradle and the four original retaining screws are then put back into place. And you would like to think that this... Uh, rebuild is now coming to an end or so you would like to think now after this chapter break for testing testing you'll see that when I went to test this model um, this happened <laughs> Drive shaft's not in properly. Yeah. Indeed. So when I put the model together, the drive shaft has fallen out. So I had to strip the model down and reinsert the drive shaft, which I meant taking the body off and that die cast weight. And once it was where it should be, you can see now that the Pullman is running nice. All the lights are working as they should. So we've managed to rectify the fault with this model. And I'm just going to have another look around this power car here. Because this really is a stunning model. I mean, if you're not impressed with this, with the colour, the silver roof, the Pullman crest on the front. then uh, and I mean, the cab detail is fantastic as well. So now we're going to go on to the layout and give it a run. Now, as these are three car units, I actually watched Charlie over at Chadwick Model Railway do this. And he um, assembled his Pullman by laying on its side and pushing the couplings together like this. Which I find a much easier way of trying to do it on the track with the tool that Backman provide. It's just that you have to move three coaches at once to put them on your layout. Which isn't the easiest thing to do. But now it's on the layout and it's time to test it on DCC. And as you'll see, the other half of the unit is just sitting there to the right with the red light on. So if I extinguish the garage lights, 
you can see that all the interior lights are working as they should and they are bright the cab lights work on both models although on the gauge master controller because they're triggered i have to hold the button on to get them on now the all important table lights and there we go they are working and that is on the power car and coaches that had failed before so if i just move the camera around you can also see that they're working in the parlor car that dark gap in the middle there is the kitchen bit which doesn't obviously have tables on it so i'm going to put the main lights back on that light up and show you the interior detail and if you want to watch your eyes i'm going to turn the garage light back on and i'm going to put the two halves of the train together and then run them and you will see that these motors and models are perfectly in sync with each other there's no pushing or pulling these um how backman have done this is beyond me because you don't need to consist this this runs as one unit and it is absolutely fantastic so the plastic coupling in the middle which doesn't conduct any electricity i found was easy to connect um, without laying it down because you didn't have any metal pins in the way but once that was connected together all the lights now work on the train on the two halves and the train is able to go and run around the layout so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to leave you um to watch this blue pullman unit running around the layout for a bit and then i'll come back um after the running session to do a bit of a conclusion but i hope you'll agree that this pullman unit is absolutely beautiful it really is a lovely model and although it is quite old now backman should be congratulated for making this and i am led to believe although I stand to be corrected, that the original Midland Pullman, like this, can no longer be reproduced as Backman has altered the tooling to provide the Western region sets.
As you would have heard in that running session, the rear power car was emitting a high-pitched whine. This was a dry motor bearing, which after filming I applied a small amount of oil to from my Fleischmann pin dropper, and the noise has abated, so it runs perfectly quiet now. As I said before, this model is simply stunning. It is an absolutely beautiful model. It is a train that I've always wanted, and indeed I did build one from a trying model several years ago. And I am very happy with how this model has turned out. Even having to repair that uh, PCB, um, it's not off-putting. And I hope you find this video helpful if you ever have to do that in the future. I've tried to divide this um, up into chapters. So hopefully YouTube will pick up on that and chapterize this video. But I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye for now.